This video is about the Mark 7 Volkswagen PCV system and trying to bring an understanding to it um, and retrofitting a Mark 8 PCV valve to fix some of its shortcomings. There's a lot of misinformation out there about it and hopefully this video helps shed some light on that. Uh, a little bit of background. My name is Tony. You might know me as Derhas from the Golf Mark 7 forum. Um, I'm a 17 year master tech, uh, recently transitioned into software. Um, I do want to give a special mention to Mosquito from the forum and SR1981 from the CMOS Tools user group. The two of them figured out how to adapt this PCV to the Mark 7. I'm just one of the first people to actually put gauges to the crankcase and figure out a way how to quantify it. All right, so quick overview of what's going to be covered. We're going to be looking at how the stock PCV works, that way we can understand it. We're going to look at problems with the Mark 7 PCV valve. We're going to look at differences in the air oil separator comparing the Mark 7 versus the Mark 8 valves. We're going to compare the Mark 7 and the Mark 8 valves flow both at idle and at wide open throttle and the flow through the valves. Um, we're going to take a look at what might be happening during throttle transitions. Um, we're going to touch on inline catch cans and why they actually cause problems with a stock PCV. We'll also briefly touch on aftermarket plate style PCV catch cans, um, how they do fix oil ingestion problems, but they potentially create some other issues. Um, we're also going to look at Mark 7 versus Mark 8 real world results. Um, I tested it out at an autocross event and we're going to take a look at the data there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let you know the retrofit parts needed, part numbers and all that good stuff. And we're going to take a closer look at the PCV hose and future plans for testing and further development of this solution. So what is the problem with the Mark 7 PCV valve for track use? Knock. All right, so here you'll see these top two snips of log files are from my autocross event back in June. I was seeing over 10 degrees of knock correction at times, uh, mostly correlated with hard right-hand turns. The bottom log here is from my July trip to Virginia International Raceway. I was seeing up to 18 degrees of knock correction with five plus being pretty consistent throughout the entire day. All right, so let's talk about how the stock system works so that we can understand it a little bit better. All right, so at idle or very low load, the intake manifold is under vacuum. Vacuum is drawn on the PCV valve through these ports that go through the cylinder head through this little path on the PCV right here. So it's sucking air in and it's drawing on the crankcase via this red path where uh, blow by gases and everything from the bottom end are vented upwards. This turbo inlet pipe at this point while the intake manifold is under vacuum and there's no air moving past the turbo inlet pipe, or at least not a big amount of it, is not drawing any kind of a vacuum at all. Um, it will draw a vacuum at higher RPMs and or when the turbo is spooled, but air has to be driving past the turbo inlet pipe or through the turbo inlet pipe in order to generate a suction on the opposite end of this hose. Now, we're not going to be looking at wide open throttle under transition. We're going to be looking at it as if the engine has already maintained boost and it's at higher RPMs. With the intake manifold and the cylinder head ports here under boost, there's a check valve just inside of the PCV assembly that closes off, which prevents pressurizing the whole crankcase any further than it might already be. There's no longer a suction coming from here. Um, with boost and high RPMs, there will be more blow-by of combustion gases past the rings, uh, potentially pressurizing the lower engine block without additional help. That additional help comes in the form of the turbo inlet pipe. It's got more and more fast-moving air coming past the PCV connection, which causes a negative pressure or vacuum to start getting pulled on the crankcase. All right, so let's start by taking a look at the air oil separators inside of the PCV assemblies. Um, this applies to both of them right here. All of the oil that gets sucked into the intake via the blue path, which is just below this spot right here, or even into the turbo inlet pipe, must come from either the air oil separator here being overwhelmed with oil, 
for this bypass valve opening and allowing oil to burst through here and enter the diaphragm assembly where it later gets dispersed throughout the rest of the valve. Uh, Mark 7s, they struggle with hard braking and right hand turns on track and autocross especially, which points toward oil from the oil pan rushing towards the coarse oil separator in the lower engine block. This gets pumped up towards the fine air oil separator in the PCV. Um, anytime that you have an excessive pressure differential between this little blue spot here and this red spot here, this bypass valve is going to open. It's going to flood in here through under the diaphragm and it'll be waiting to get sucked in by either the turbo inlet pipe or the cylinder head vacuum blue path over here as soon as you let off the throttle. Now looking a little bit more at these uh, PCV valves and differences between them as far as the air oil separator goes. Volkswagen says that they've made some changes to the crankcase breather bypass valve as you can see here. Um, basically the crankcase breather bypass valve was revised with a material designed to separate air from the oil when it is in use. Um, also when comparing them side by side there's a larger outlet of the air oil separator right here and right here, which should help drain the air oil separator quicker, making it not get overwhelmed nearly as quickly. If we zoom in on those, you can see the Mark 7 is like a little tiny pinhole right there, and the Mark 8 is much bigger by comparison. So as we discussed earlier, when the engine is under low or no load, and it has a vacuum source inside the intake manifold, it's drawing air on the PCV system through the blue path, which is located right there or right there on both models. Um, interesting to note is the air path for the Mark 7 is pretty simple. It just has to go up this one level, whereas on the Mark 8, it actually has to go up through um, it has to go up two additional levels in order to make it out and into the back sides of the intake valves and, you know, to cause knock. So this looks pretty promising as far as oil control goes. All right, so as we discussed earlier, when you're under full boost, there is actually a vacuum being generated in the turbo inlet pipe, and it is drawing on the outlet fitting of the PCV assembly. As you can see in both of these photos, Mark 7 on the left, Mark 8 on the right. Um, for the most part, they work pretty much identically. Um, one interesting thing to note, and I don't believe that this affects us in any way as far as performance or anything like that goes, um, but there is a valve here that is dedicated for the N80 purge solenoid valve. Um, and also on the bottom side of this uh, wall, I guess, um, it has another check valve. And from what I can tell, what it allows it to do is instead of the N80 only being able to cycle for an EVAP leak test when there is intake manifold vacuum drawing on it, it can now run whether there's intake manifold vacuum or if the uh, turbo inlet pipe is generating a vacuum. So it can run the N80 leak test on the EVAP system at any given time. Again, like I said, I don't think that it has anything to do with performance or anything. It's going to affect us in any way, but it is just another difference worth noting. All right, now, if you happen to watch video number one of this PCV series, you'll see that I built a oil cap specifically so that I could log crankcase pressures. I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but I will go ahead and link to that video right here. You can see the finished product on the car and what I did my testing with. All right, so let's talk about what happens to this valve when it's going from vacuum to boost and then boost to vacuum. When you're going from vacuum to boost, basically you're either at idle and you're getting ready to lay into the throttle to take off from a stop or you're cruising, you're off the gas, and then you get back on it. Um, you have vacuum being drawn in through the blue port right here, 
um, but the turbo is not really spooled. You're not going at like crazy high RPM or anything. So you do not actually have much of a vacuum draw on the turbo inlet pipe. When you lay into the throttle, this vacuum source goes away. And because this isn't fully up yet, you're going to see roughly zero inches of vacuum or maybe even slightly positive um, because the crankcase is building up pressure as you first lay into the throttle and it gets you know pushed up this way. Um, it's not too big of a deal, but um, eventually the turbo inlet pipe starts drawing more and more of a vacuum and the gauge slowly goes down. If you happen to watch any of my videos, you know, parts two, three, or four, you'll see that. Um, so moving on, when we're going from boost to vacuum, we'll look at the Mark 7 valve here first. So when you're under boost, you're pulling two inches of vacuum from the turbo inlet pipe. Remember, the blue path is closed off because the intake manifold is under boost. Um, and when you let off the throttle, such as entering a braking zone, you are then introducing, you know, two and a half or three inches of vacuum, basically a heavier vacuum source, more of a, more of a deeper vacuum immediately right here as this closes off. If there happens to be any oil inside of the valve, that's going to encourage liquid to go from an area of higher pressure to an area of lower pressure. On the other hand, with the Mark 8 valve, we're pulling 1.7 to 1.9 inches of vacuum under wide open throttle from the turbo inlet pipe. When you let off the gas, it's actually the vacuum source, because this vacuum source goes away, this vacuum source gets is uh, actually a little bit weaker than what was previously right here. So as a result, um, anything during that short transition period, it's probably a lot more likely to stay either put or maybe come back out this way away from this blue path intake where it would normally get sucked in by the Mark 7 valve. One other little point worth noting is this bypass valve here. Uh, it will open up more likely if you have a heavier vacuum on the top side than so when the Mark 7 valve immediately pulls a deeper vacuum on the top side of the valve, it's going to be more likely if because it's also happening right as there's a high pressure situation coming from the crankcase at high RPM, high load, high boost. Um, it, it's pulling a vacuum on the seat of this valve and maybe maybe it's open, maybe it's not, but when you increase this vacuum even more quickly, there's most likely a very localized spike in vacuum, which may pull this valve open even further, allowing oil and blow by to enter this valve and eventually make its way into one of the ports later on. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the effect of inline catch cans with a stock PCV. Um, right in here, we'll talk about first, when you hit wide open throttle, when you're doing wide open throttle, um, you don't have a draw on the turbo inlet pipe immediately um, until the turbo is spooled up and or you're moving a lot more air enough to generate a vacuum. You don't really have anything here, so it starts out with, we'll say, zero pressure inside of the valve. Um, once the turbo begins to spool, it will start pulling a vacuum, and normally it starts pulling from a short hose from here to there. Um, so everything that it's generating aside from the volume of that little hose right there is going, it's, it begins drawing a vacuum on the crankcase immediately. When we add all of this volume from the catch can, this turbo inlet pipe now has to draw a vacuum all the way through these long hoses, all on the can, all through this hose, and then finally into the valve and the crankcase, which is what really needs to be brought under a vacuum more than anything. So it delays all of that stuff happening. Now, when we get back on the throttle, your intake goes from boost to vacuum. So this check valve that was previously sealed under wide open throttle opens up and air can flow in through here. Now, what is significant about that? Well, because all of this volume that is stored in the catch can, it acts as a giant vacuum reservoir. What's going on is this vacuum has to be depleted somewhere. So in order to fill that void, it's going to draw air in. It's going to draw some, probably some from the turbo inlet pipe. 
but it's also going to draw some from the PCV assembly as well. So depending on the size of the can, the bigger it is, the worse it'll be. The bigger these lines are, the worse it'll be. It's going to take longer for pressure inside of the can to equalize with what is in the turbo inlet pipe and or inside of the valve. So for a second or two, I don't know how long it actually is, but for a split second at least, you've got two vacuum sources. You've got a vacuum source being pulled here and you've got a vacuum source being pulled in the intake. What is the result of that? It's going to be forced to draw something from somewhere, so it's going to be pulling air a lot more forcefully from the air oil separator and potentially unseating this bypass valve. Anything that it pulls over here, it's going to draw a bunch of oil over into the valve. And more than likely, I'm guessing, this is speculation again, it ends up sitting around, chilling around down here. So when you get back to the throttle, you hit the gas and it seals this check valve. So you no longer have a vacuum source here. And because the turbo inlet pipe is delayed to drawing a vacuum, you get on the throttle and again, crankcase and pressure builds a little bit faster than what the turbo inlet pipe can start to draw. So it's actually pushing pressure up through here. It's probably pushing more oil up through here as well. Um, and then this turbo inlet pipe, it's pulling, even when it starts pulling a vacuum, it's going to be delayed and it has to suck down all of the air inside of this can and through these lines before it starts drawing on the crankcase and everything here. And all of this oil that was previously accumulated inside of the valve is going to be sucked right back into the can. And I believe that is why when you have aftermarket catch cans with the stock PCV, you end up with them filling up very, very quickly. Um, you'll notice that larger cans and longer runs of lines cause more problems with this. A lot of people like to point to this and say, oh, well, if I had, if I didn't have this catch can, then all of this oil would be going into my turbo inlet pipe. That's not the case. If you were dumping, I, and I've seen some people have this can filled up, and it's not a small can by any means. Um, you know, it might be like a six ounce can or so. Um, I've seen those cans get filled up in the over the course of three or four autocross runs. If you were dumping that much oil into the turbo inlet pipe without a can, it would be running so terribly. And if you were to pull your intercooler hoses, you would find quarts and quarts of oil over the course of like a couple thousand miles just chilling in there. This turbo inlet pipe is not taking any meaningful amount of air. This problem that everybody's trying to solve with smoking is not from oil going into the turbo inlet pipe. All of the smoking problems when you're getting back on the throttle is from the valve sucking it in through the blue port right here. So I think that people installing these catch cans is a false, um, false fix or a false sense of safety when they install them and then they see this oil that accumulates in here and they think that, oh man, this is doing such great things for my engine. I don't think that's really the case. We're going to talk about the PCV plate replacements just very, very quickly. In a nutshell, they do work to avoid oil ingestion problems, mainly because they all do away with this intake vacuum port entirely. Um, as a result, they can build pressure in the crankcase and that will happen anytime that the turbo is not spooled and or you're not at higher RPMs, basically whenever there's not a huge draw on the turbo inlet pipe. It relies solely on that to draw a vacuum on the crankcase. Um, some effects of that will be in daily driving type situations on the times that the turbo inlet pipe is not being pulled on, you know, stuff like idle or, you know, pulling away from a stop, stuff like that. Um, it's going to have the potential for that pressure to push a little bit of oil past all the seals. It might be the rear main seal, might be the front seal, might be the cam magnets, might be the oil cap, might be the cylinder head, the um, cam cover assembly, stuff like that. Um, you're basically going to be putting a little bit of pressure at all times that you do not have the turbo under 
uh, the turbo inlet pipe under a vacuum. So those are some things you got to weigh for yourself for a purely race only car. It's probably not a terrible idea, but most people that are putting these on are daily driving these cars and they have other consequences. All right, so what were the results of running the Mark 8 PCV? So this is from the autocross event last weekend. Um, here's run one, run two, run three. Run four, I accidentally forgot to start the logger, but it does automatically log anytime I go wide open throttle. So there was a few times that I was 100% TPS. So it did capture a few little snips of that run. Run five is here and run six. You'll notice that the only blip of knock that I had the entire time was just this little bit right here, and that was only 1.125 degrees of knock. Um, it happened when I was going on and off throttle. Um, so it was not a result of the PCV ingesting oil because that ends up as tons and tons of knock. This is purely coincidental. And I would call the initial testing a pretty good success. All right, so what all do we require to retrofit this setup to a Mark 7? Obviously, we need the PCV valve itself. Um, it is important to note there is an F version of this valve that comparing to other uh, applications seems to be used on lower boost applications. Um, to my knowledge, everybody who has actually tried running a Mark 8 PCV have all used the B revision, which is the latest available for the Golf R and the GTI on the Mark 8 platform. Um, you're going to need a PCV hose from a 2021 Tiguan. The reason why is because the Mark 8 valve has a completely different setup as far as the hose goes. We'll take a quick look at that in a minute. But the 2021 Tiguan has this goofy little, little attachment which matches the turbo inlet pipe fitting as used on the Mark 7 platform. We'll talk more about this little extra um, hose that we are not utilizing, at least not yet, shortly. You'll need a bung or a ceiling cap. You'll see this, it actually looks like a sensor, but this is just a dummy sensor right here, circled in yellow. Um, I'm not 100% sure of what the application actually is. I haven't been able to nail that down, but some of these valves have a sensor, which costs roughly $40 right there, or you can buy a $3 ceiling cap instead. And lastly, as we are adapting it as of now, you'll need, and I forget if it was a 5 16 or a 3 8 vacuum cap, but we remove a hose that was formerly coming off of this that comes with the PCV hose assembly and we just put a cap straight to it. Um, we do that on the TIG-1 hose basically to minimize air volume and it gets rid of a uh, vacuum leak for lack of better terms. That way this turbo inlet pipe can begin pooling vacuum on the PCV assembly as early as possible. So on these newer generation uh, Volkswagens that we're taking the PCV assembly from, they have a slightly different um, evacuation procedure of the crankcase. First, we'll look at the Mark 8 right here since it's a little bit better documented. It's got a single hose that comes off of here for any time that the turbo is spooled. And looking closer, it has the turbo outlet, the turbo muffler area, actually has a little port where it has pressure being pumped up through it and back out to the turbo inlet. And right in here is a little Venturi that draws a vacuum on the crankcase. So as a result, anytime that it starts flowing anything above zero PSI, it's got some air going in here and it's already starting to draw a vacuum on the Venturi. Um, the Mark 8, this is the only source of vacuum for the uh, for the crankcase when it's when the turbo is spooling up, you know, with when the intake of the blue port is not drawing a vacuum. This is the only other place that it can draw vacuum from. The Tiguan hose differs just a little bit because this hose that we removed goes right here on the Tiguan turbo. It's got a spot inside of the turbo outlet as well, and it essentially accomplishes the same thing. It's pumping boost through this hose, and there's a Venturi that is inside of the hose, and it starts to draw a vacuum on the crankcase a little bit sooner yet. So 
as it is right now, capping off this hose, we are taking advantages of the Mark 8 PCV design itself of the valve. But I think that if uh, once I got some bench testing done on a hose that I've got on the way, um, we're going to look at uh, installing and utilizing the rest of this to improve PCV performance even further. I'll be sure to do a follow-up video when that happens, and um, I anticipate it will be pretty good. Now, I have no illusions about the Mark 8 PCV valve solving everybody's problems. It's probably not going to be the case. Some other things you have to consider. Big turbos. We have no idea how much boost these things can take before it starts messing with check valves and whatnot, um, or even just moving more volume through the valve itself as far as blow-by goes built motors for the same reason. Um, there's going to be more blow-by through the bottom end if you have looser rings, stuff like that. Um, aftermarket turbo inlet pipes. If you're changing the amount of air or the cross-section of that tube uh, that draws vacuum on the crankcase, we don't know how that's going to affect the crankcase vacuum. That could potentially screw up how the PCV system works. I have the stock turbo inlet pipe, stock air filter, stock intake pipes and everything. So I'm not the one to test that. Aftermarket air filters, same reason. You're reducing restriction potentially, and that reduction in restriction might cause it to draw less vacuum from the turbo inlet pipe or take longer to build vacuum. And lastly, uh, running the Tiguan extra hose to boost if we do end up utilizing that, you're technically introducing a very small boost leak. If it's enough to matter, we don't know yet. Um, I plan on testing that in the near future, and we'll let you guys know. And I hope that you like this video. Um, do me a favor if you like and subscribe, it's greatly appreciated. Um, let me know in the comments if you do end up retrofitting the Mark 8 PCV to your Mark 7, how it goes for you. Uh, be sure to include things like the turbo inlet pipe, intake, what kind of tune, what kind of turbo. Um, all this stuff is still pretty early in these initial stages, and trying to learn as much as we can is super helpful. Um, I will continue to give some updates. I'm going to call this video number five the conclusion, at least with the base information as we have it now. But I will be doing follow-up videos next time I get on track. Um, I'll be at Fastivus at Summit Point on September 30th. Um, feel free to find me and say hey. Um, so, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it.